use Wolfram Mathematica to analyze the squeeze theorem, which is a very common first semester calculus topic. And what we want to do, first of all, is let's recall what the squeeze theorem is. And this is lab 2.4.1 for our calculus Mathematica manual. And so let's recall the squeeze theorem states that if we have three functions with this relationship, f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, which basically means g of x is trapped between f and h when x is near a, except possibly at a. And when we look at the limits as x approaches a of f and h, they both go to l. So let's think about the situation here again. We have g trapped between f and h. And as x approaches a for f and h, both of those, so those are the two outside functions, get squeezed down to l. That forces the thing in the middle, which is g, to have to pass through l as well. So the limit as x approaches a of g of x is l. Okay, now what we're going to do in this lab is demonstrate this squeeze theorem. So we want to show the limit as x approaches 0 of x sine 1 over x equals 0 by the squeeze theorem. So first remember sine is always trapped between negative one and one. If you graph sine, it just goes up and down over and over between negative one and one. So we know that sine of one over x is trapped between negative one and one for all values of x except at zero, right? Because what happens to sine of one over zero? Well, it's not really defined. If we take these inequalities and we multiply everything by x, we get what we have here that negative x is less than or equal to x times sine 1 over x, which is, by, by the way, the function that we're interested in, and that is trapped above by x. Everywhere except maybe at x equals 0, we're not really sure what's going on there. Okay, so I'm going to define that function, x times sine 1 over x, and since I know that the limit of negative x as x approaches 0 is going to be 0, and also the limit as x approaches 0 will go to 0. Since I know those two things, and f of x is trapped between those two values always, then I know by the squeeze theorem that the limit of my function as x goes to 0 has to be what? You tell me. It's got to be 0. Okay, now this is one thing to see it, if we write it down algebraically, it may look a little more meaningful to us than just typing it three times in Mathematica until I bring in a plot. So if I plot these three functions, negative x, f of x in the middle, and x, and let's get close to zero. So let's go from negative 0.5 to 0.5. Look at that plot. Okay, so the blue is the negative x and the green is x. And notice that the yellow not only is trapped between the two, it has to funnel down to the zero where they both limit to zero at x equals zero. And if I zoomed in some, that plot gets even more interesting. Yeah, it just kind of spirals down like this. A friend told me this looks like Luke Skywalker flying close to the Death Star, getting ready to blow it up. But I hope that's a good illustration of the squeeze theorem. Another way we could do this, we could say the limit of x as x approaches 0 equals equals the limit as f of, x, of f of x as x approaches 0 equals equals the limit as negative of negative x as x approaches 0. And I believe this should be a true statement. And it does show me that this is true. Now with exercise 2, we want to illustrate with plot and manipulate that Oh, look, now we have x to the n power sine 1 over x to the n power is 0. So now we're taking what we just did, but now we're raising it to the nth power. Okay, so I already have a def two variable function defined here, g of x n, where n is a variable and x is a variable. And our reasoning is going to be the same. I already know the two functions that bound this on the top and the bottom. We could go through this exact statement up here. We could say that since negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of 1 over x to the n, less than or equal to 1, multiply everything by x to the n power, and we'll still keep this inequality, and so it'll work the same way. So what I want to do now is plot, instead of negative x, I want negative x to the n, then I want g x n, 
and then I want x to the n power. Okay, now I'm going to plot this from negative a to a, and I'm not going to get anything when I do this because it doesn't know what a is. The reason I'm setting it up that way is because I want to be able to use a manipulate around this, and I'm going to vary two things. I'm going to vary n from 1, which would be the case we just did in exercise 1, all the way up to 10, because that's what they asked for here. We want n to be integers, okay? We don't want n to be 3 halves or something, so I'm going to put comma 1, and that tells Mathematica to increment my manipulate here by increments of 1. And then the other thing I want to vary is A, and A is just my plot range window. So we're going to start out going from negative 1.2 to positive 1.2, and as I can drag this down, it's going to go all the way from negative 0.01 to positive 0.01. Now outside of that, I want to just add a few visual features. I'm adding in a plot style with red thick dashed for the first function. I want my middle function to be blue, and then my third function to be red, thick, and dashed again. All right, so let's see what we get here. All right, cool. So here I can, this is the case when n is 1, so that's like what we did in exercise 1. And I can specify now when n is 2, I get this kind of graph. And notice the top and bottom, those red dashed lines, went from straight lines to parabolas, and then we're going to have cubic functions and the fourth degree functions and so on, all the way up to 10, okay? Now, let's go down to three, because it's kind of, or even two, it's kind of interesting, more interesting on the lower powers. Now I'm gonna drag A across, and I'm gonna zoom in, and you can see how we're getting closer to zero. That blue line, it looks crazy, and you can see why we don't understand exactly what's going on at x squared, sine over one x squared, until we see that it's bound above and below by these parabolas. And by the squeeze theorem, at zero, this crazy blue tornado thing is hitting zero, or it's passing through zero. That's the trend, anyway, is what we should say. All right, and the same is true for degree three, four, five. After a while, they kind of start looking the same, right? Okay, I hope this makes sense. Now, this is a really cool visualization. I think that you can see the manipulate and plot really make this thing come alive. So again, just walking through how we did this, I started, because remember, I usually like to go outside in when I'm writing, but since I'm nestling a bunch of functions within each other, I actually started with plot. So um, let me just take out this plot style thing for a second, just so we can visualize it. All right, so I took my plot right here, and then I'll, I just wrapped manipulate around it, and I set in, which is the first variable I wanted to toggle, from 1 to 10 in increments of 1. And then A, I wanted to start with 1.2 and end with 0 0.01. Okay, and then all I did after that was go in and add, add in a few things with graphics, which I have a video going over that if you want to, to look, plot um, a 2D plot style. I just think it makes our graphs come to life more when we add in these colors. Or right, what else can we do? All right, so let's use the squeeze theorem for exercise three, not two. We want to use squeeze theorem with plot to figure out what's going on as x goes to infinity of cosine squared 2x over 2x minus three. And we're saying that it goes to zero, but we need to show that. Okay, first I have my function h, which is cosine of 2x quantity squared. I've seen a lot of students do this when they're writing in Mathematica, cosine squared of 2x, and I understand that because that's how we write it down usually, but the computer doesn't understand what that means because it's a cosine function, and then we're squaring the cosine function. And we have that over 2x minus 3. I don't really know exactly what this thing looks like, so maybe we should try plot h first just to get an idea of what we're looking at. Whoa, okay, that's pretty weird looking. And we said that as we go to infinity, we actually hit 0. Um, is it obvious that we do, though? Let's see. Let's go from 0 to 50, just to see what's going on. I mean, it's not exactly obvious this thing is going towards 0, especially where it's kind of bouncing up and down over and over again. So this would be a great opportunity to use squeeze theorem. Now, we need two functions, and since I'm go just going in the positive direction, I could see that the low here would be 0. Okay, so for example, I could plot 0. 
now we just need to figure out a function that would be above cosine 2x squared over 2x minus 3. And um, I can use the same game that we played for the previous two examples because cosine of 2x is always trapped between negative 1 and 1. So that means that cosine of 2x quantity squared will actually always be trapped between 0 and 1. So I know then that 1 would be an upper bound of the numerator. So let's just try 1 over 2x minus 3. And I'm going to go from negative 15 to 15 again. And I'm going to add in a few features. Okay, So at this point, I kind of know what this looks like. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to add in a plot range. And I want my y just to go from negative 1 to 1. I want to see all that. So if I just list one set of coordinates in here, that Mathematic understands that I'm talking about the y direction going from negative 1 to 1. Okay, then I'm going to add plot style like I did to the previous graph. And what's going on? So the first function, which is 0, will be red, thick, and dashed. The middle function, which is the h of x, will be blue and thick. And then the third function, which is 1 over 2x minus 3, will also be red, thick, and dashed. So it'll look very similar to the previous example. All right, I'm excited. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So look, we have that. We already knew we had this little bouncy curve thing. But look, it's bounded by a rational function. This vertical asymptote somewhere at 3 halves. And then we can see as we're going out towards negative infinity, this thing is going to get closer and closer to 0. As we go out to positive infinity, because of the red dashed line here, this thing's going to get closer and closer to 0. We can see that even more if we went from like 0 to 100. Yeah, and you can see the red dashed line is going to go down to 0. And in fact, 1 over 2x minus 3 as x goes infinity will, in fact, hit 0. And so I know that my h of x function will as well. As always, I hope that you see that Mathematica is a great way to visualize these interesting concepts that sometimes just drawing them on paper or just writing them down, the interesting part doesn't really jump out to us until we can see it kind of animated like this. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. I'd be glad to help. Understanding plot, understanding manipulate, and of course knowing the limit function are all very useful things in Mathematica. I'd be happy to help again. Just leave a comment or reach out to me somehow. Thank you for watching.